Hi guys, Micro here. This is my video on the new memorial to Guffix. Just a little video giving a rundown of what it is and what you can get from it. It's really not as hard as it may seem first going into it. It's a pretty straightforward process and easy to do and easy to learn. It gives loads and loads of new and helpful divination perks, loads of extra effects that you can do while doing other skills or other activities that can help with divination. And it's all unlocked by doing the memorial to Guffix. There's quite a lot of new effects. I won't list every single one in this video, but I will leave a wiki link in the description of all the locations of the engrams, even though I'll show you them in this video. If you rather look at it in written form, it'll be in there. And it also has all of the new perks in the description. But just in my personal opinion, I'm going to talk about these couple of new amazing effects. I think these are some of the best ones. So I handpicked these out of them to talk about. The fire spirits from fire making are updated to divine fire spirits. These divine fire spirits will then give divination XP when collected and some divine energy product. This means they might be more money than the standard ones. And if you don't need the charms, doing these while fire making could be just some extra money back and some extra divination XP. So definitely a good one there. The next one is ethereal connection. The duration of divination springs is increased. This means you could be more AFK while training divination. Longer springs are always a really cool thing, especially if you have like a Nightmare Muspa familiar or a Light familiar. The longer you can AFK on one node, the better. Especially if it increases the duration of springs in the arc, that would just be crazy. I doubt it would work there though. Shared knowledge. Divine locations now grant 125% of the experience but yield no items. This one obviously won't be that good for things like rock tile bubbles. Although it could be quite good for like box traps and divine simulacrums if you've already got a lot of signer porters and things like that. Stored power. The benefits from fully completing a Gafixian cache will be bottled for later use. So if you complete a cache on the third hour and you're going to get a buff, you can bottle it all up and use it all at once, which means you could use an hour buff while training divination rather than having to do it after you finish the cache. That's a pretty cool little quality of life thing. And lastly, probably my favorite, there's three different ones. You have one that helps with pickpocketing, one that helps with hunter, and one that helps with planting seeds. All three of these things has a chance to yield memory shards while doing this certain activity corresponding with the one you choose. So if you chose the Guardian of Life, you have a chance to yield memory shards while planting seeds. Memory shards can be transmuted into divine energy products. This means you might be able to make some extra money while pickpocketing Prif Elves or doing Hunter on the Ark or even just doing a tree run or a herb run and make even more money. This one definitely seems really interesting and hopefully they give good divine energy products. I'm yet to fully test it, but I'm very excited to do so. First of all, in order to get here, you need to go above Eagle's Peak to where I am on the map it tells you exactly where the memorial to Guffix is. You can also teleport here if you get any of the memory strands. By just clicking on the memory strand in your inventory, you'll be teleported outside. Just look how lovely the shrine actually looks. It really, really fits well here, and I really like how awesome Jagex had made this look. It's so simple, yet so effective. So after talking to the woman, she will give you an engram. This engram is the lowest tiered energy, which is power energy, and it requires some of those memory strands. I went to the G to try and buy some power energy. I put in 300 GP as I thought it would be more than enough to buy it, but apparently too many people are buying it right now and it wouldn't even sell for that. So I'm just going to use my cursed energy that I have left over instead. These memory strands in my inventory that you need alongside the energy are obtained by just doing divination. Just doing divination in general will give you these strands and you'll just collect them over time alongside your energy and your memories. I'm just going to charge up this first engram and trade it in. When I traded it in I got 17,000 divination experience although the divination experience scales with level. So if you're 99 divination you'll get 17,000. If you're lower you'll get a lower rate corresponding with the level you are currently at. After you have spoken to the lady again just run over to one of these pillars. You only have one thing you can do on the pillar and you want to make that. 
which is the engram you just made. If you click check on the Naragi, you can talk to it, which will give you the four out of six of the tutorial complete by just talking to it. Then if you run back to the woman, she'll just chat to you for a minute. Once you've finished talking, run back to the Fountain of Energy, which is that big butterfly statue. Once you get there, there's only one thing you can actually do, and that's click the first buff and confirm it. It's only part of the tutorial and you can change it later, so you don't have to worry about that. Once you've confirmed it, you get the next part complete, and when you go back to speak to her, you get the last part complete. The next part I just want to quickly talk about is finding the engrams as they can kind of be a little bit tricky to find at the start as they're quite small and awkward to see in certain locations. Each engram requires a different tier of energy and there's one for every normal tier of energy. The first engram is in pest control. If you go to the southeast corner of pest control it's on top of the barrel as you can see in the video. The next engram is in the Tears of Guffix starting area. It's just south of Tears of Guffix entrance. The next one is at the World Gate. It's just in between these two rocks near the World Gate. The next one is in Burfoot near where you build your monthly statues. It's in this little altar house and just on the side of the altar. Next up is north of Falador. As you can see, they've moved this fence all the way back. It used to cover the ivy, but now there's a giant open space and it looks a lot neater, to be honest. It's on the middle stone, so all you got to do is click that middle stone and it will give you your engram. The next one is near the Combat Academy in Lumbridge. It's just north of the Combat Academy in this little house on the table. This one is underneath where you do the Dwarf Cannon quest. And it's at the shrine where you use the pebble wand to go down and get the necklace for another quest. And it's just in the bushes here, very easy to spot. This one is in the Tree Gnome Village maze. It's kind of annoying because it's at a dead end. You have to run around the maze quite a lot in order to get there. It's just like one huge circle around the maze. But once you're there, you pick up the engram and it's worth it. There's another engram at Fist of Guffix, so you need to enter the cave, go through the purple portal in the cave, and as you can see on this bookcase, there is another engram. Just loot that engram off the bookcase. This next one is in the wilderness, so make sure you bank all your gear. It's at the Cursed Energy spot, right in front of where you dunk them all in. Nice and easy to get. And the last one is in Xanaris. So you need to do Lost City to get here. This is probably one of the only ones that actually requires a quest. And the only one that skillers can't do. Once I got all the engrams, I went back to the Memorial of Guffix. I converted my cursed energy into the energies that it said on the different engrams. And then I used up all of the strands I had gathered while doing divination on loads of different engrams and getting different perks. I made sure to unlock the hunter one as that's the one I'm going to be using the most. And that's pretty much it. You could just do this over and over again and hand in engrams. Once you've handed in 12, you can prestige. Once you prestige, it allows you to do the engrams all over again, which then will give you more experience. But every time you prestige, it unlocks an extra buff slot. So you can have more than just one buff active at any time. So that would be pretty cool having multiple buffs open at the same time and active. That will lead to some cool extra divination gains while doing other skills and while doing divination itself. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to try and do videos on new content releases more often. I really enjoy making videos that can help you guys get an advantage or an insight on a very new update. Always enjoy helping you out as much as I can. This update is a really, really cool one. So I'm really pleased that I can just make a quick rundown of it for you all. So you can enjoy it too. Give the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new for future content. Feel free to join my friends chat in game for a chat. Or my clan is open to everyone and anyone. So if you want to join Goblin Slayers, you're more than welcome. Same with the Discord. The link will be in the description for the Discord. And if you have any suggestions, make sure to leave it in the comment section below. Always love hearing your feedback. And until next time, see ya.